Father Neil for the opportunity to speak, and thank you also for the work that the board has done since the last meeting. Um, so I can be brief, and this is short. I wrote it down, so I wrote it down. I read a quote recently in the Burlington Free Press that I want to share with you tonight. And the quote is, when my neighbor hurts, why hurt? I think we have a lot of hurting people in our town right now, actually in our country. Well, that's what we're talking about. Some well-intended actions have had some unintended results. So I ask tonight that we stop, take a deep breath, and concentrate on what we have in common. And that is to reunite Swato. As we start these crucial and necessary conversations, as difficult as it is, if we come together with an open mind and are willing to listen respectfully without judgment, we can learn from one another. We are off to a healthy, good beginning. What I added after watching this afternoon and come here tonight with hope and inspiration after listening to the service this afternoon for Congressman John Lewis in our national capital. I hope you have an opportunity to hear. Thank you. Thank you.
The problem is not my artwork around racial unity. The problem is that my character and citizenship were questioned simply because my artwork that depicted the theme of racial unity and I would not give in to whitewashing, would not give in to white supremacy. The problem is that there is racism in Swanton, and it won't go away just because this board pretends it is not here. Thank you. I also wrote a letter about how your last meeting violated open meeting law, and I am delivering you each a copy. Thank you for your time. Of the beginnings of what is now the Abenaki Nation. 
at Missisquoi in the uh, around 1970. I first came back to Swanton uh, in the 1980s to witness the fish ends. Um, if anybody remembers how contentious those were, those were not uh, just words, those were arrests and uh, real action dealing with the whole issue of indigenous uh, or aboriginal right. Uh, I can remember working with Jeff Binet on, the, uh, on the, all the issues against prejudice against Abenaki ch school children and the harassment uh, of Abenakis by the local police. I can remember in the 1990s, uh, beginning in 1995, uh, the terrible uh, attacks by the state of Vermont against the Cisco Abenakis, uh, claiming that they were uh, genetic, political, and genealogical frauds. I can remember um, the Monument Road crisis, and uh, I remember sitting on the line there, and uh, I wasn't. Some of you were not very happy uh, with me at the at the time, and we were on the line blocking the traffic on Monument Road. I can remember the uh, mid 2000s hate bloggers uh, that attacked the Cisco Abenakis uh, at the uh, down at the depot uh, for accusing them of not being Abenakis. Uh, most troublingly, I remember uh, in 2011, only nine years ago, right in this very room, two Abenaki factions uh, yelling and, uh, and just saying horrible things about each other that made the, uh, made the news. So that is the context of uh, racial issues here in Swanton that I can remember. Uh, and I just put a few down to be able to fit into this uh, short amount of time. Most importantly, for our lessons uh, of history, uh, that after Monument Road, we sat down, we started working together. I remember with Neil and, uh, and many of you, the endless discussions and the meetings. Yeah, oh, my God. No, but we hashed it out. Uh, we got it worked out. We got better. And uh, I think it was one of the great uh, triumphs was when the Abenaki Heritage Days moved into the Village Green. And so uh, Swanton accepted the indigenous community here as an integral part uh, and honored it. And in return, the Abenakis uh, have given back to the town uh, the food shelf, the uh, heritage days, adults and children's programs, uh, the Abenaki Museum, and, uh, things at the Swanton Elementary School, events at the Swanton Library and Wildlife Refuge uh, headquarters. This is a unique partnership that Swanton formed uh, over the last 40 years. And uh, the things that we had to solve in those days, uh, I don't know exactly, I'm not uh, really uh, sure about what the underlying structure of issues are, except that indigenous people figure uh, not that greatly in the discussion, even though uh, a large percentage of our population uh, is indigenous. Um, I think that uh, the final point that I'd like to make is that we did it. Uh, we got through a rougher, uh, perhaps in some ways. And I just want to tell you that I'm working with a uh, group of indigenous people uh, on cultural competency and racial bias programming uh, for uh, various municipalities in the state. I'm handling the historical aspects of it. And this lesson here is going to be part of it. Now, and so that's what we're doing is working as a community. The four Abenaki bands, uh, the Vermont Indigenous Heritage Center, and other groups were uh, creating a whole program, specifically an indigenous uh, bias training. And uh, me being the oldest uh, one on this whole group of, uh, of people and the historian. And I'm using uh, the lesson that I just gave you in Swan Hill at the end you can go from a very dangerous place. I mean, nobody was shot, but uh, there were, we came pretty close a couple of times. And I remember some people, uh, not just, well, we didn't have people on those days. But I remember people right in my face uh, yelling at me uh, and all kinds of other things that were said behind my back. We're fine. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you.
is Megan Conley and I am Nurse Knight. Not only to stand in support of our bar calls and the Black Lives Matter movement, but also to challenge the notion that those of us in support are merely keyboard warriors hiding behind Facebook, as stated by trustee Adam Paxton. Mr. Paxton, I assure you that I am no keyboard warrior. I am an active member of this community who is extremely concerned by the trustees' blind willingness to remove structures clearly important to the community they serve after hearing from no one but the one responsible for defacing those structures. Sirs, perhaps it was not your intent to shut down a conversation before it could even begin. But the actions you took during your last meeting sent a very clear and powerful message that you would rather move to silence us than admit you are afraid that others' expression may shine a light on the racism in our community that you would rather pretend doesn't exist. You stated that instead of using the R words, people should get involved. And I agree with getting involved. But I ask you, those who claim they're not racist because they have biracial children, or their best friend is black, or believe there's nothing wrong with covering up an image they find offensive, even though they cannot state what about it is offensive. How will those individuals be engaged? How will we prevent them from continuing to be a loud, disruptive, and harmful minority if we cannot tolerate disagreement over public art? Because I guarantee you that David Hemingway and others like him will not participate. They believe in their heart that there's nothing wrong, that there is no reason to discuss their own implicit bias, that the history they were taught and history written and crafted by white men is true and all-encompassing. Art has always been a powerful medium. It allows us to express ourselves when words fail. Art boards were a powerful vessel that allowed community members to express solidarity, compassion, love, and yes, the importance of black lives. By removing them, you have chosen to endorse racist sentiment in this town instead of allowing unrest to open the door to dialogue and change in order to placate those who just want it all to go away. I am here to tell you that I am not going away. My voice is not going away, and I will use it to speak up for equality and freedom of expression. And that I will continue to call you out and call you in when decisions you make or words you utter systematically limit those rights for members of this community. Because swanted should be better than that. Thank you.
I am shocked at the way the board conducted its last meeting. I am shocked at the utter failure to identify and call out racism. I am shocked that this board would intentionally create a forum for only one side of the issue to be heard. Originally, I felt the board was violating the artist's freedom of speech for their comments, but I feel it's much more about racism within this board. Racism is more than outright hatred for a group. It is calling artists, others, and outsiders for depicting racial unity. These are huge concerns for me and my friends. We held a meeting on the art boards without adding it to the agenda, without notifying the community members that this would be discussed, and that is a violation of our model meeting laws. You all stated you were going to unscrew the boards from the post and leave the post standing so that there would be they would be there when the art boards were redressed in January. Instead, they were heavily damaged when removed by a backhoe. This manner of removal shows your ultimate contempt for the artworks and telegraphs to everyone that you have no intention of reinstating them. This now goes beyond artworks. At the heart of this matter is the failure of every single one of you to do your job. You all chose to be village trustees and thus should make yourself available to your constituents. After all, we put you in this position of trust. You all have an obligation to engage with the residents of Swan Village in discourse and solutions. It is reasonable and a basic expectation that the first time one of your constituents emails you, that you should reply back to them. I wrote two emails to Mr. Paxman before we had a very lovely conversation. I wrote three to Mr. Spear. I wrote four to Mr. Lombard, who's not here today. And I wrote six before I learned Mr. Leach doesn't do emails. This is unacceptable. You've all failed to do your job properly. You have failed to allow forum for all voices to be heard. And you have perpetuated the fear that people of color would feel. As a resident, I demand you all resign immediately. Thank you. 
to use that in select words. I, I see it, uh, I don't want to see us having three different meetings everywhere. Is there going to be one a community of swamp? Okay, I'm with a neutral art mediator or facilitator or something. Yeah, we'll play something like that. Okay, my second one kind of goes to the fact that the request for apology because of damage done. You mentioned before we started this whole thing that you all had thought about this, that you had realized that you wanted to, um, that there were stuff going on. And, you know, maybe you just talked to that. Because you did come in here tonight saying that you realized a couple of things since the last meeting that you wanted to do here. What happened? What, what brought that on? I just want to elaborate on what uh, Terry was saying, that uh, we've been trying to connect with uh, Suzanne uh, Davis. I did. You did I she did finally get back to you? Okay. And uh, I guess from what I understand, there's a lot of other communities that are going through the same issues. So that's going to probably take some time to coordinate with her. Uh, but yeah, we're not going to have many meetings. It'll be together with the village and the town. Uh, so yeah, that's in the works. Your other question, I guess, I don't, I don't quite understand. What I think she's asking if I'll ever receive an apology for all the negative things that about me. Well, actually, I, I was for other artists. Sometimes it's hard to get people to apologize. <laughs> but I was thinking there's some, I heard some recognition that things do need to change, that they weren't just, it wasn't just about the art boards anymore, and that it wasn't okay the way the last meeting went. Something's going to be different going forward. That's what I heard. Am I correct or am I in the room? Try to give you guys a. So, like, for instance, at the last two days, it wasn't on the agenda, and only people on one side all came. So, she's asking, will the next time that lesson has a different person? No? No, I guess I have to be very clear. Because what I'm trying to say is, if, I, if it's on tape, it's on tape somewhere, Neil. You know, when you um, started this conversation, you gave us some norms, and you also said something about the fact that you've done some disgusting since the last meeting, and that you decided together. But did I mishear that? I could have sworn it was kind of like a, a recognition that... Your discussions around racism, particularly, I believe, you guys had discussions around the racist things that were said by yourselves and the missing board member, and then you guys came to the conclusion that some of the things that were said were inappropriate, and you said you two would do better going forward, and she's asking how you're going to do that. How are you going to do better going forward? What are you gentlemen going to change? That's what she's asking. Actually, I was <laughs> not <about that. laughs> What I was really saying is, it seems to me that they are that there was a a, a, a recognition of wanting to make things better. That's what I'm saying. It might not be seen as I'm sorry about the way that went, but I did hear some recognition that there was some understanding that things didn't go as well as they possibly could have. There was a lot of stuff going on, and that they realized there is racism, there is stuff like that in any community, and that we need to do something because. That's what I thought I heard. I'd have to see it on uh, TV. But before I got up to speak, I remember saying that because I was going to really ask for something like that. And I remember thinking, I don't have to anymore because they have thought about what happened. So, so I think where you're going with this is uh, what, what's the next step going to be? As, uh, as for the comment, uh, the timeline I read at the beginning of the so, Actually, what I was trying to do was to bring these guys together and be kind of a little peacemaker. Because yes. I didn't hear, that's exactly what I was trying to do. I didn't hear apology. I, I know some people want apology. I didn't think you guys seemed like you want to give an apology. But I think that what we can do is we did hear something that sounds like an overture of mm -hmm. um, peace. We're not looking for any apologies from anybody. Lots of them from the other, the other people involved. Want to start afresh and, and keep some stability. Mr. Lombard questioned my citizenship. So, that is not civil, so I would like to know where, what the board is doing to make less xenophobic and hateful so comments about small residents. So let me make this last comment. Uh, we've been working hard on trying to write something to present to the community. People say things in haste. 
and are misconstrued. Even in an email, they're misconstrued. So I would I want to say that we are working on a comment to make public, but we're also working hard to try to get a forum together so we can sit down. Like Neil said, we all understand that we all have biases within ourselves. Yes. So not, not pinpointing any individual people, we all understand we all have bias. So we're working on that process right now. That's So.
Council, no, and nobody thought that the Arts Council into this, but there has to be a, a discussion between the Arts Council and the village before they go to the walls and go up and get the plan for it. And uh, hopefully this will join us together instead of suffering. So, so, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Leon. You did a nice job. Thank you. Well said, one small. One point. Okay, now anybody can stay for the boring part of the meeting if they would like. I think we're almost uh, at the end of our agenda. Uh, next, next item on the agenda is any other necessary business. Uh, Adam? Just one thing I want to uh, thank the Public Works for working on York Street, getting that ready to be paved, putting a green space in. Uh, that's huge. So. That's all I have. Uh, according to Dean, they've been working on Notch to yep. give some more green space there. The blue blue looks nice down there. So yep. They're going to have some positive. There you go. Uh, Chris, well, I just wanted to follow up on my last video. This, I did write a letter to the postmaster in regards to getting it back on the post mailbox. And asked him to either contact me or contact Rich. And I suspect that he's doing some research. I haven't heard anything back. Okay. But I will dog it until I do. <laughs> I haven't heard anything back either. Okay. Anything else? No. Uh, we need an executive session. Okay. Well, that being said, uh, I entertain the whole meeting in the Swamp Building Board of Trustees for Monday, uh, July 27th, 2020. So moved. And second. Motion has been made and seconded. So we're doing this meeting, regular meeting in the Swamp Building Board of Trustees for July 27th. All in favor of the motion to take up on the same line. Aye. All in favor of the motion to take up on the same line. Thank you, everyone, for a productive meeting.